Passionate about high school redesign and innovative language, uh, English language arts practices that empower each student, our next speaker is a teacher, a learner, a collaborator, and a swim coach at Calgary's newest high school, Robert Thursk. Incidentally, oh yeah, <laughs> students right over there, or fans, anyway. Incidentally, each of his grade 11 ELA students have to perform a Pachakacha speech as part of their year-end assessment. So this is just bringing everything full circle here. Please welcome to the stage, Travis Robertson. What a unique moment, thank you so much. It's actually one of three choices. We don't make them all, but we push it for sure. <laughs> okay, here we go. Stuck for days and due tomorrow, my first paper jam I remember had nothing to do with the photocopier. My first paper jam was more creative block with a different sort of paper. The research essay, the report, the standard five paragraphs that I would become all too familiar with. And it was all a disaster in my own making and a lesson into delving into uncharted territory. I was in grade five and the topic was not an uncommon one. Animal, choose one. List all its features in the juvenile essay format. Organize it well, don't, re don't repeat, no grammatical errors. Don't plagiarize, but get as close to plagiarizing as you can. I wanted, for who knows what reason, to do something new and different. No elephant, no buffalo, no horse, no dolphin. I wanted an animal no one had heard of, which would mean one I hadn't heard of either. I went to school early. I went to the library I chose between 1990, 1988, and 1986 as World Book Encyclopedias. I was on a quest for an animal that would turn some heads, maybe even my own. I grabbed the A anthology and got pretty far into lightning strike. Aha, this is it. Exotic, unheard of. This is the only one that matters. <laughs> Alpaca. Some encyclopedias remained on shelves, others were patiently or not so patiently shared. My five paragraphs of writing would have to come from only two of information. I had to circle my square but couldn't. I'm determined to make the alpaca topic work. I have three A encyclopedias telling me the same brief information in the same brief way in the exact same color picture. You know how this goes, not well, I bomb. The good draft is only better than the terrible first because it's written much neater and slower and it has my grandma and mom trading off shifts to make sure I don't get food or fevered tears on the fool's cap. Oh, what a peek at life to come. My parents and teachers began to see my flair for being different and I got to see what counted and what didn't, all of us doing the best we could 25 years ago. But it was an age of information scarcity and schooling for compliance. The next years would be mildly better. Those exact same encyclopedia articles would be on easily scratchable CD-ROMs. Now, it might sound like I hold a grudge here and I don't at all. I look back at my schooling with real fondness, even a fondness for that predictable order, and see some value in what I was asked to do. I don't see so much value that I want to go back, though. So refuse the temptation as education critics and Edmonton Journal, or former education critics, and Edmonton Journal columnists repeatedly want you to do just that. We've come so far. In terms of assessment, learners don't have to go rogue now to experience the potential payoffs or struggles of creative risk-taking. The possibilities for inquiries and the resulting shared products are now so endless. As Oprah would say, when we know better, we do better. And as I began my teaching career, I would try to do both. Even here, as I'm super poor, working right here at the Stampede Grounds, I'm beginning to realize that knowledge is personally constructed through practice and questioning. I would try hard to overcome two teaching temptations, teaching as I was taught, despite massive societal changes, and teaching to my own learning style, rather than to a diverse many. An actual paper jam, as opposed to the much rarer alpaca ones, though, is an apt allegory for a jam much larger in scope, and one all too real for too many of our learners. Almost 20 20% still aren't getting through to graduate, perhaps because what remains from industrial revolution rigidity that reprioritizes above all else for each age cohort sameness. Our public board responds, learning is unique as every student. It's not foundational basics for some and complexity for others either. It's complexity for all learners with the foundations woven in. Educational opportunities need to be inviting, engaging, and empowering for each member of the learning community. Within my classes, it doesn't matter who you are, you're invited, sometimes fiercely. At the table of public education, I had a seat, and so do you, every day, no exceptions. In making all this work a confluence of events, would be deeply transformative to my teaching and learning. I would deeply consider our system's ability to teach with technology rather than about it, and the powerful advantages of learning inquiries to be a main course with instructional design rather than a possible dessert. This through two complementary initiatives, Alberta's High School Redesign Framework and Dr. Sharon Friesen at the U of C's Teaching Effectiveness Framework. The U of C's Galileo Network would remind me that while we don't always get what we want, we do always get what we choose. More and more often, our schools are able to effectively choose learning above all else, including order and rigidity. While naysayers would have you believe that this results in disorder, the actual result is environments where learning can be personalized and learners can thrive and connect. 
So maybe this new wine or jam needs new bottles or jars, and the Northwest was gifted an amazing space with new learning and was gifted to us. It's here, not even unpacked. Open, flexible spaces with learning commons at the school's heart. If teachers are designers of learning, a space was crafted for us and our learners to create anything. Formative assessment practices that improve student learning and guide teaching alongside new technologies allow us and our learners to make new connections. We can create meaningful, rigorous tasks with multiple entry and exit points, ensuring success for a variety of skills, abilities, and talents. So much so, in fact, that many of our courses blend together rather than stream apart. This framework also reminds us that teachers best improve their practice in the company of their peers. At Robert Thirst, we're so lucky to cast our nets wide as we learn, share, and grow with educators across Alberta doing similar work and elsewhere. This is, all too, this is too complex to do alone, and the work we do together is so much more rich and enjoyable anyways. By better connecting with others, we better connect with those at the heart of our work, our learners. I'm ahead now. <laughs> wonder why I'm talking so fast. <laughs> our partnership with the U of C has teachers fostering a variety of interdependent relationships. Within our building, you are known. Our community structure, small schools within the school, homeroom connect classes, and targeted interventions ensure this. It's not about principles, though. It's about authentic personalization and a spirit of openness. And there are struggles. This is a journey, not a destination. Which brings us, perhaps, to Dr. Sharon Friesen's most important framework principle. Work students are asked to do and undertake is worthy of their time and attention. Work must be deeply meaningful and connected to the real world and recognizable to the work's actual discipline. Here are two community projects that brought parents to tears, maybe the best litmus test for meaningful community embedded work. Now, changes may be not easy for everyone, and if education is tough love, we have a public here that really wants an emphasis on tough. Well, there's an odd nostalgia out there to education's toughest days within information scarcity. Sticking to research, best practices, and learner center approaches requires amazing people around you, and my graduate studies co cohort and my amazing colleagues do just that. However it might have looked initially from the outside, the goal was never to innovate the most or for its own sake. Our goal is to look at innovation and change in the same way we look at ensuring our environments are safe and caring. We are responding authentically to the needs of our learners and constantly assessing how we can better personalize to ensure open doors for diverse and unknown futures. No more information scarcity. Let's design learning for information overload. Our world needs confident learners who know how to learn and confidently take on new and unfamiliar challenges. So let's roll up our sleeves and get on with it. These are exciting times, and copying just isn't going to cut it. So let's not unjam, let's jam, and if nothing else, let's uncopy. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you, Travis.